Let's do uh, one more video on parametric curves. I want to focus on not the details of plotting points, but how do you look at sort of qualitative features of parametric curves? And one good way to do that is do a matching problem. So we're going to look at um, these. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, these four parametric equations. So x equals t cubed, y equals t squared, or x equals sine 2t, y equals cosine 5t. All these four possibilities. And I've graphed those four, but I've shuffled the order. And I want to talk about how you could do a matching problem like this. So it's a lot like the problem you'll have in the homework. And um, I just want to talk about some features that you can always look at of uh, these equations. So here, one of the things about this is that there's no sines and cosines. Um, so there's no repeating behavior. It's not periodic. And uh, another thing you can always look for is, does it go off to infinity or not? Well, if I let t be anything, for all of these, I'm just going to let t be anything. If I let t be anything, um, then this is going to go off. This is going to go off to uh, infinity, plus both plus and minus, and this is going to go off to infinity, but just plus. Okay, and those are both good things to know. So it's unbounded. The coordinates go off to infinity, uh, but the y is greater than zero, greater than equal to zero. That's very good. So look for periodic, look for bounded or unbounded, look for signs. Those are really good to look for. Um, okay, now let's do, let's do the same kind of analysis with all these real quick and then we'll start to see if we can get matches already. Uh, this guy is periodic. Well, it's a little tricky because um, sine 2t is going to repeat with a different period from cosine 5t. Remember that the period is 2 pi over b, where the b here would be 2, here would be 5. So that's going to produce some interesting results. But it still is going to be periodic, because eventually you're going to come to something where these guys both repeat. And it's definitely bounded, because sine is between minus 1 and 1, and cosine is between minus 1 and 1. Uh, but we get all sine combinations, so all quadrants. It's going to show up in all quadrants, because these it's pretty um, easy for these guys to be both plus plus or minus minus, etc. So here, uh, now we're back to definitely not periodic. And certainly, I can get really big values out of e to the t. It's unbounded. And here, uh, the x is going to be greater than or equal to 0. Greater than 0, in fact, because e to the t is always a positive number. ln t can be positive or negative, although it does restrict the t values. Now, here, I haven't labeled any t values on any of these curves. So that's not going to help us. But we might as well observe that this is the one where, I, even if I wanted to, I couldn't possibly put in a 0 or a negative value of t. But I'll put that in parentheses because it's not going to really affect the shape of the curve as, as, as drawn since I don't have t labels. Now this is interesting. This is a mix of progressive behavior. 3t can be big negative, can be small, can be positive. Um, these guys are kind of progressive but all, always positive or always non-negative. So it's kind of a mix of uh, unbounded and circular. When you get a mix like that, you don't expect to see circles. And this is what we're, we're, we're developing with the cycloid example, is that there's not going to be a circle that comes out of this, even though there's circular motion involved in like the motion of a wheel of a bicycle. But um, it's going to be that mix. And it looks like, you know, it's hard to tell with the signs, but this can definitely be p big plus, big negative, so that's going to be any sign. This one can only be non-negative. This guy can be negative, but not very much negative. So we can just put down the y coordinate is going to be at least negative 1. That's the smallest that could ever be because this is not going to be negative and this is going to be at, at smallest negative 1. Okay, so let's look at the uh, the features here. Well, um, pick one basically. Well, this one looks like the most complicated to me. Let, this one looks pretty simple. Here x is greater than or equal to greater than 0 and it doesn't look like it's <coughs> trying to be bounded. It doesn't look like it's trying to come sort of wrap in on itself. And <coughs> the y values are both signs. It looks like it's going to be this guy. Okay. And one way to, to test that would be we could actually do, um, let me insert this. We could actually look at uh, the equations. Here, y 
equals ln of t. OK, but t is, if x is e to the t, then t is ln of x. And so this should be the graph of ln of ln of x. And you could graph that and confirm that, that that's actually going to work. Okay, That's not something we know off automatically the shape of, but that would be one way we could do that. This is one of the few where we can eliminate the parameter nicely. I'd say this is probably the next most simple. Let's come down here. Here we can see that y is always uh, non-negative, but x is both signs. It doesn't look like it's trying to be bounded, although it's hard to tell from a finite graph. But it certainly is not periodic. It's not coming back. Or it doesn't look like it's coming back and repeating, although that can be a little tricky sometimes. So it looks like it's going to match the t cubed t squared. That's another one where if we wanted to, we could eliminate the parameter. y is t squared, but t is the cube root of x. So that's the cube root of x squared. Or in other words, it's x to the 2 thirds power. And um, that's not a very familiar power function, but if you graph that on the calculator, you can actually see that that's what it turns out to be. OK, so that's the match there. Um, now the other two more complicated ones. Well, this one you can see that it looks like it's a closed curve and that it looks like it's repeating itself over and over again. It's a pretty complicated pattern. It takes a while to repeat it, but it doesn't look like it's going off into infinity. It doesn't look like it's um, doing more and more complicated stuff forever. It looks like it's doing one complicated pattern and then repeating, and so that's going to be this guy. It's also in all quadrants, and it's rather symmetrical in terms of the all quadrants behavior. And we, I didn't put a scale on here purposely, but if you put a minus 1 and a 1 here, a minus 1 and a 1 here, then that makes sense because we know that the sine and cosine are between minus 1 and 1. So that's going to be this guy here. And then by elimination, we could do this. But let's suppose we didn't have elimination. We couldn't use method of elimination, which is really dangerous for a matching problem. I do not recommend using it alone because uh, if it messes up, then you've got at least two wrong, if you want to think about that. So here we've got a mix of, well, what's the unbounded behavior? If the cosine and sine weren't there, um, let's just really quickly. Suppose it were x equals 3t and y equals 4t squared. Well, we could actually eliminate the parameter on that. Then t would be x over 3. And so y would be 4 times the quantity x over 3, all squared. That is 4x squared over 9. That's a parabola. Ah, this kind of looks like a parabola drawn really badly. OK, so it looks like maybe we're taking a parabola and adding in a little bit of wiggling. The cosine t and sine t is kind of like I've got this sort of circular waviness as I'm doing the parabola. That doesn't produce any circles because it's combined with parabolic motion. But it does make it plausible that we've got this mix of unbounded and parabolic and some circular wiggles that are superimposed on that. I think it's kind of cool how it's like wiggly like this. One thing about this that I noticed when I put it together is it wiggles more down here than up here. That's because if you actually look at how fast, if you plotted just this guy, sort of the base curve, and you plotted like minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, etc., regular t values, you would see that it's moving rather fast up here and over here and moving slower down here. And so as it's moving slower, the cosine t and the sine t may have more of an effect. And when this guy's moving fast, it pretty much dominates, and the wiggles don't show up as much. But the wiggles make it actually even go backwards a couple of times, pretty much, um, in near here, near the zero, where it's going slower. That's just a little more advanced kind of uh, idea to apply. But um, certainly, we've got a lot of reasons for believing the match between this one and this one.